Welcome to the latest segment of Moments Off the Map presented by USA Wrestling. Um, my name is Derek Sakura, Manager of State Services at USA Wrestling. Um, today I have a special guest, Jason Trusnick, long time, 10 years in the NFL, uh, but more importantly, grew up as a wrestler. So Jason, just wanted to thank you for taking the time today to, to talk with us and just give me a little bit of a background on, you know, your wrestling background, when you started wrestling and, and how that all came about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, first, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, wrestling has been a part of my life since I was six years old. So it's not only taught me a lot of things, but it's been part of my life all the way through, uh, you know, elementary, high school, college, and then helped me in the NFL and post, post-career post now too. But as far as getting started, uh, my dad started me when I was six years old. And uh, I was a young kid, just my dad raised me and my, three, my two brothers, so it was three of us, and we were going to stay busy. And Wrestling was one of them. He grew up uh, in Maple Heights, which is in the Cleveland area. Uh, back in the 70s when my dad wrestled, it was a big powerhouse. And uh, <clears throat> so I grew up uh, wrestling for Milkovich, which is a good name. I'm sure a lot of the people that are in wrestling family know who the Milkoviches are. Um, but grew up uh, you know, wrestling for them. And along the way, traveled through different clubs of wrestled for Dave Mariola in this Longwood Y in the Cleveland area. And just was a part of my life. My dad was just put us in and there was no choice to quit. There was no choice to do anything. And he just knew what we'd get out of it at the end of the day. And just, it's so I wrestled for, ended up wrestling for 12 years. So six, all the way till I was a senior in high school, almost went on to wrestle in college. But at that point uh, I decided to play football instead. Very cool. And, and I was looking up some information on you this morning and, and I read something that you wrestled 119 pounds your freshman year in high school. And when you were in the NFL, you were 6'4", 250. So a little bit of a difference. And you talked about it a little bit. And, um, you know, you went to a Division three college to play football. And, and one thing that I really found interesting is you didn't play in varsity until your senior year of high school when you went from the backup quarterback to playing defensive lineman. So talk about that a little bit. And I read a quote that's, you know, you're – I talked about you a little bit and said, you know, if you tell Jason he, he can't do something, he's going to prove you wrong. So how did wrestling help you with that process and just keep you determined to, to prove people wrong? Yeah, I mean, for I mean, you said it right there, just being determined. Uh, the, the sport of wrestling, just moving from youth to middle school to high school, um, just allowed me to do so many things. First, just work ethic. Um, I was taught from my dad is just like, you're going to get what you put in. Like you put in a lot of work, you put in the extra work, you're, you're going to see that success on the mat. And when you go out there one-on-one, -on -one, you know, if, if you worked a little bit harder and like, yeah, you're going to lose some matches here and there, but I guarantee nine times out of 10, the guy that's going to put in more work on his technique, his hard work, his work ethic, all that stuff is usually going to come out on top. So not only did I take that from wrestling, but took that to the sport of I, football and baseball. Like you said, I was a backup quarterback in high school up till the week before my senior year, they asked me to move to defensive end. And I was like, hey, however I can help help the team, whatever I can do to kind of do it. And I, I truly believe moving to defensive end not only changed my life for, for the greater good, but it was because of wrestling with, you know, you look at coordination, balance, leverage from the sport. So not only the mental side, but the physical side that allowed me to have all those things as I'm pass rushing and coming off the edge that only now is now able to take to one year senior, but move into college. But yeah, like you said, just that determination and work ethic and the perseverance to push past the, just a lot of things in life. It just, it just really carried on to all the other sports I played. I, like you said, football and, uh, and baseball. Yeah, and that's a, another thing I wanted to bring up, too, is, is um, you know, growing up, you played three sports all the way through high school. And, you know, a big thing today in the, in the youth culture is specialization and getting kids, hey, I'm just going to get them doing one sport and I'm just going to train them till you know, they're, they're making the NFL. That's always the dream, right? Or the mm -hmm. pros in baseball. What, what's your take on maybe – getting that experience with all playing all three sports or giving kids, you know, an all around experience to propel them to be better in just maybe one sport after high school. Yeah, for sure. Great question. 
Um, yeah, I kind of stand firm a little bit. And like, this is uh, just an opinion of mine. Everyone has their own opinions and thoughts and things like that. But, um, you know, especially at a young age, I think kids should be open to all kinds of sports. Why not? Like, um, I played soccer. Uh, my son, I have a you know nine-year-old son. He's done soccer, football, wrestling, baseball. Um, he's wanted to do lacrosse, played around with that. Why not open the options to a young kid? What makes us as, I guess, parents, uh, coaches, um, just mentors to say, you are playing this sport um, and without them sometimes even having a choice. But the, the things you get from playing multiple sports you work the body in so many different ways that, um, you know, you're not repetitively throwing the ball and working your shoulder every single time. You're put in different positions, your body's growing and all these things are happening as a young child. Um, as you get a little bit older, I do see, uh, you know, if a kid really likes the sport and that's what he wants to do and he wants to kind of go, then I think when they're old enough to understand and make that decision, then that's their choice for sure. But, uh, you know, I, I just think, especially as young, young, uh, young kids, young athletes, you know, we should, they should be experiencing, uh, see all aspects of life, all as aspects of sports and just um, allow themselves to grow and kind of choose what they want to choose moving forward. Um, I didn't have that choice. Kind of my dad was keeping me busy, three sports. He kind of told us you weren't coming home and this is what you were doing. And that's what we did, but uh, I'm thankful for it, man. It's just, and I, I see there's so many, there's so much good that comes from it playing multiple sports for sure. In, in right now, um, I believe you have a son that's, you know, in sports and kind of going through that same battle and going what you – doing what you did and going to the highest level and making the NFL and playing for 10 years. I mean, what's your message to him? Are you just letting it play out? Or, you know, I see a lot of parents kind of maybe living through their kids or want to propel them to, to, you know, to make it to the next level and, and maybe a little bit too hard, but – you know, what's your message to your, your kids and, and whatever they're involved in? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I think just from the youth, well, myself, uh, like I said, my son's nine. Uh, and then I have two daughters who are younger than that. But uh, in our city, I'm the, I'm the youth wrestling coach, head wrestling coach right now. So not only is it a challenge, not only coaching him and teaching him, um, you know, this year we had 90, 90 youth wrestlers, K to six. So not only are we trying to spread, I'm trying to teach him the message, but trying to teach 90 others uh, the message. And I think it's more, what I've tried to do is um, teach more than just wrestling. Yes, there's all kinds of things that we can teach our youth that I try to like, you know, like I said, you're better in all your sports. The life experiences you're gonna go through, the camaraderie that you have, man, there's nothing better than watching these kids. You know, nine years old, they come off a mat, they're so mad they lost this and that, but man, five minutes later or sitting on an iPad or watching a match, joking around with their buddies. And I see that camaraderie and that closeness, that teamwork that makes me realize as a coach that there's more, there's more to wrestling than that win or loss. Like there, it's about life and it's about just sometimes having fun. Like we all want to win, believe me, as coaches, as our kids, they want to win. But uh, about two years ago, I had a little humbling experience with my son and I got on him way too hard as a dad, as a coach, and he made a couple of little comments of just why you're so mad and this and that. It really humbled me about two years ago and put me in a different spot as a coach and a dad to realize like, listen, I don't want to ruin the experience because I want him to wrestle forever as long as he can because it does teach you so much from life. So I had to pull back and realize, hey, I'm going to teach you and give you all the tools you need. I want you to work hard, give me a hundred percent, work on your craft. But at the end of the day, like, let's have fun around, let's have fun with this too and move forward. So that way, you know, you don't get to high school and get burned out and that kind of stuff. So like my message to him is just, listen, I tell him all the time, he goes on the mat, like practice, whatever, like we're going to do, we're going to give a hundred percent. You're going to work on your craft, win or lose. I want you to make sure you got better and we're going to have fun. Those are my three messages. I try to tell my team and try to instill in him um, as much as we want to win and life and matches get hard, but at the bottom line, we got to kind of put ourselves, we got to kind of sometimes take a step back as a dad and a parent realize what our kids really want to. Cool. Um, so switching gears a little bit, kind of coming back to your story, you're, you went to, so after high school, you went to Ohio Northern to, to play football and it was a division three program. Um, and you were a two-time All-American there. And talk about maybe what challenges, what, 
got you and what was the process for you actually making it to the NFL? I know you entered the draft in 2007, you were undrafted, but kind of talk about that whole process and, and give us a little insight on, on that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I made the decision to go D3. Um, obviously, I think it was a little part of being the quarterback, moving the defensive end my senior year. So I decided to go Division III. Um, the choice was, you know, I had coaches basically tell me I wasn't big enough, fast enough for even Division II, let alone Division I. So my choice and talking to my dad and my parents and it was, listen, I'm going to go to D3. I'm going to put four more years of football in, have some friends. You know, that was just a big part of my life. So why not carry it on for four more years if I could? Uh, so did that and had some just good things happen along the way. Uh, you know, positions open up and I had a really, really good junior year in college. Um, and that kind of put me on the radar for the NFL, which I, you know, we all dream about as a kid. I grew up Joe Montana fan quarterback. Like that was my hopes. Like, let's go, you know, to the NFL. But um, at that point, it came a little closer to reality. And when I start getting looks and uh, following the next year or two and um, was coming out, finished my college career. And now I'm getting pro days and opportunities. Coaches wanted to come work me out and do all these kinds of things. Um, so with that, I did really well. And the reality just became closer and closer as all these kind of little things uh, were happening. And after the draft, so sitting around watching the draft, hopefully I was going to get drafted. But the New York Jets called me. Eric, I remember Eric Mangini, I'll never forget the phone call, um, called me and just said, hey, like, how would you like to be a New York Jet? And that opportunity right there still gives me ju uh, goosebumps today is like, all I ever wanted, and I think everything I did was an opportunity. Because every opportunity I did, I kind of just, you were going to open the door, and I was going to knock it down. Like, and that was it, because you gave me that opportunity my senior year in high school for football, knocked it down. Like, all the uh, overcomings of wrestling 112 in high school and becoming bigger and stronger and faster. Like, and now this was just another, another opportunity in my life. And I uh, went up there in New York in uh, 2000 was it 2007 and uh just that opportunity I kind of ran with the rest of the time and had a couple good plays and the next thing you know it just things just built up and made the team and the rest of my career just kind of followed it and I just <laughs> opportunity after opportunity with a little chip on my shoulder because I wasn't big enough wasn't fast enough and there was a lot of draft picks coming in every year to replace me and um, you know, just put, made me push harder, that discipline, that hard work, everything that wrestling, football, my dad, everything that taught me. Very cool. So, and just to recap, right, I'll just go through the list of teams you played for. You played for the, mm -hmm. the Browns, the Dolphins, the Panthers, the Vikings, and the, the Saints. And, and you talked about it a little bit there, but, you know, were your coaches ever, um, did they ever ask you like, hey, what, kind of drives you and motivates you or what, why do you have that chip on your shoulder? And, and was it ever a wrestling reference to your coaches? And they're like, Oh, cause I've heard a lot of, you know, NFL coaches, college coaches talk about how, you know, wrestlers make great football players. Mm -hmm. Silver is very similar, like O-line, D-line with hands and balance and all that stuff that you talked about. Did they ever ask you about that stuff? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, that was, I mean, honestly, that was one of the reasons. So Eric, I don't know, Eric Mangina, the background and a little bit came from Belichick and every year when he was under Belichick, he would actually bring a couple wrestlers that had a background of football. Some, I, I don't remember who he, who Mangini brought when I was there in New York, but I, I believe, I thought he wrestled for Ohio state at one point, but didn't even really have a background of football he said, we'll teach you. And that, and that was his thing. Like every year in camp, he was literally going to bring a wrestler or two that had some football background, but was a great wrestler because you can't, there's just something about it. Uh, I still say to today, like there's been nothing harder than a high school wrestling practice in my life. And that was like in the heat of Miami, like, and so um, with him, he brought those in for a reason because he knew a, the hard work discipline that they were going to put in the work ethic. And not only that, but like, like I said, going back to that coordination, that balance, that leverage of understanding your body, I truly believe makes a good athlete. So um, that was something that he did. Like I was bringing some wrestlers when I was in Miami, um, you know, talking to our special teams coach. They, we used to talk wrestling and stuff all the time. He loved it. He was from Jersey uh, around some wrestling. My other special teams coach was from Cleveland. So he knew the sport of wrestling and just 
what kind of person it instilled and what kind of person it made. Um, there's, there's certain people in life um, that you understand of what they're going to bring to the table. And someone that puts a lot of time in wrestling uh, from the work ethic, like I said, to what their body's made of, the, the heart, just the stress they put their body into, you really know what they're going to get there. You know what they're going to give to you uh, each and every day. Um, so I still joke around with my partner today. He's, he grew up in the boxing world and we joke around all the time, a partner in a gym. And he's like, I'm not, you're a wrestler. I ain't messing with you. You know, too much. You throw, you, I ain't messing with that. And I, I'm a boxer. So, you know, even that, like people, people that know the sport of wrestling, just understand what kind of, what, what the character and what the person they're going to bring to the table. So yeah, that was a thing that definitely is, uh, a lot of the coaches and people in the NFL knew about, and they, they liked it. So you talked about, uh, and this is one thing I found interesting that I found out this morning, actually, but um, maybe talk about memorable, memorable moments in the NFL during your career. One thing I saw this morning that I don't think a lot of people can say is you actually intercepted Tom Brady. So maybe talk about some moments that were special to you during your NFL career. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think some of the memorable, obviously that's a big time memory. Uh, you know, I got the ball. It's something I can tell my son. It's kind of cool. It's, uh, so, you know, something like that. Um, you know, I didn't get a whole lot of chances to make it to the NFL um, or to playoff games. I made it to one playoff game in Minnesota. Uh, I remember that game actually lost by um, a kick at the end of the game. So that was a uh, memorable um, just a lot of defining memories that almost don't even that go farther than the game that go farther into locker rooms and having conversations and flights and bus rides and things like that, that just, I mean, we can go over plays and all that kind of stuff. Um, but just, I think overall, just the experience of um, being able to play the game. I still remember one of the other things I guess is remember running out on that first uh, tunnel in New York first time I mean I didn't play I played D3 we had about 1500 people that watched the game not 70,000 100,000 so for me that was my first time running out of a tunnel to you know 70,000 people and I still remember that rush that I had that day um, so just you know I say a lot of the simple memories but it really just I think every team I played for and every experience along the way really just built me for the preparation of the next year or two or my post career um, that I can really, you know, really remember. Very cool. And kind of along those, you know, right now I, um, I see that you're, you started a trust Nick nation. I'm guessing it's a kind of a foundation deal that you, you help out kids and stuff like that. So just talk about what kind of what you've been doing since you, retired in, in 2018, it looks like, and yeah. kind of what your motivation is now. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, at post-career, uh, I think you find yourself in a different spot. You know, you're post all these sports that you grew up doing, the wrestling, the football, the NFL, and now you find yourself 35 and, um, you know, re reconfiguring your life and that purpose. And uh, that took me a lot, took me some time, but um, now I have a partner in a gym that we own up in the Cleveland area. It's called Pro Sports Performance. Um, pretty cool because my background's teaching, but now I get to not only teach kids, I get to train them and um, run a gym where we create a culture for adults and athletes and the youth um, to help them train and you know, hopefully reach their goals, whatever they are in whatever sports. So that's cool. I do some real estate with uh, my brothers um, keeping the family super nice to kind of have that relationship with my two younger brothers. Uh, you know, we grew up having all the time. So now we kind of attacking that. And then uh, I guess one of my biggest passions that I love doing right now is uh, just coaching. I really do. Um, like I said, head coach of wrestling uh, youth program, head coach of the rest, uh, football uh, youth programs, coach baseball, try to do all the sports, coach my girls soccer. And I don't really know what I'm doing, but <laughs> I know that, all these sports, like I said, are a bigger impact. It's all about making an impact and getting these kids to have fun and trust you. And that's honestly been my biggest passion uh, besides the gym and the real estate, which are, you know, they're fun and their jobs and, um, you know, keep the house and food, uh, house above our head and food on the table. But um, it's more about coaching. And I've realized um, that I think that passion that my dad gave me as a young kid of coaching all my sports, being the boys, and I was going to push you and coach you all these things. 
this is the same thing that I'm doing now with uh, my girls and my boys or my boy. And then just being able to impact, like you said, today's youth has changed, whether it's one sport, whether it's the mentality, whether it's whatever, all these things that go into it, the social media, the video games. If you as a coach and a parent have the ability to impact a kid, one kid, hundred kids, I don't care. That's been really, really my biggest passion is just, you know, youth sports right now. Good deal. So kind of a random question here. I know you grew yeah. up in a Cleveland area, but are, are you remaining a Browns fan or do you have a certain <laughs> team that you root for now? All right. So I made my back way, my way back to Cleveland. Uh, it's been hard because, you know, you grew up with Browns fan. I had season tickets. I, then I play and grew up there, played for him. And now I'm back in the Cleveland area. So I do, my son's a Browns fan. He does root for him. Um, you know, I root for him just cause I think I've been a hometown team. It gets hard. It gets hard. It was hard to play for. It was hard. It's hard now. So it, the times haven't changed, but uh, I grew up a 49ers fan too. So um, I just love the sport. It, it gave me a lot uh, for my life, not only watching it growing up and gave me that goal motivation, but um, throughout obviously playing. But now I, I still am a fan, man. It's just, it's a great sport. I love it. And obviously my son loves it, but yeah, he's a Panthers fan too. So still, so he's got some memories from down there. So we're, we're all over the place. Nice. That's awesome. Well, that's, that's all the questions I have for you today on Moments Off the Mat. Jason, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your busy day to, to chat with us. Is there anything else you'd want to add or talk about? Um, I mean, I just, like I said, the, this is about USA Wrestling, where we're at. It's just, um, it's probably the only sport that I really, really want my son to wrestle. He can do anything else if he wants. He can play the piano and do everything else, but... Uh, the sport of wrestling, man, is something special. And I don't think parents and kids really understand it. My wife included was never around wrestling and now sees the impact that makes it in him. So if you've never tried it, um, let your kid, let your, uh, you know, get involved and try it out sometime. You'll see a difference, uh, just the character and what it builds in your, uh, your kid's life. Just give it a try. Awesome. Totally agree with you. Appreciate your time, Jason. Take care of you and your family and appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Stay safe.